What's up guys? Welcome to a special edition of Next Gen Coaching Chronicles. Hanging out in my backyard, my bro, my bros art, <laughs> Eric bros art. So uh, for those that don't know him, they need to know him. Uh, expert in real estate. So how long have you been doing it for, man? This will be uh, year number eight. Year number eight. Yep. Um, played baseball growing up. That's yep. why we get along really yep. good. <laughs> um, but just crushing the real estate. An amazing person to hang out with. Good hearted. Always has your back. Uh, have fun times playing golf uh, up at his Flagstaff property at yeah. two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Hitting one golf ball yeah. with one hand, flashing the light in the other. Um, well, thanks for coming on, bro. Thanks for having me, Travis. So Appreciate it, brother. We, how long have we been planning this for? We have been talking about it for a minute now. <laughs> for three months. <laughs> it did take a second we to get this going. Each other. We're like, yeah. They were like, dude, let's get some cigars yeah. Yeah. and let's smoke. Cheers. And so uh, I'm a rookie when it comes to this shit, so I'm going to need you to show me how to do this. I got you. So I got into cigars recently, and do you smell it first? Is that the way to I do it? I think that might have been from our, uh, from our wedding in, in Mexico that I, I got you into cigars. I don't, I don't know if it was that. I think it was, uh, it was sitting around your fire at Flagstaff. Oh, uh, okay. Anyways, while I was doing that, uh, the reason why I brought them on so I can get some coaching tips in real estate, and I figured this is the best place to get tips. No, I appreciate you having me on, dude. Yeah, this is awesome. We're doing... This um, place is sick back here. Yeah, we're doing a monthly theme. So I like to do monthly themes in the podcast. So the monthly theme that we're going to do for this podcast is real estate. So we do real estate on the side. I would say... I would say real estate is the reason why we have our lifestyle. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I think the next level of um, just my life and career is getting in more real estate. And sure. obviously, you're an expert into it. So do I just go like this and yeah, just hit it, hit there it, you go. and then do I want to suck on it while I'm doing it? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So now, for don't, those, now don't inhale that though. <laughs> yeah, you don't inhale it. So how do you how do you smoke a cigar? <laughs> Teach me. How do you hold it? Is this the way to hold it? <laughs> Are you trying to get me to say something I shouldn't say? <laughs> this is I don't know what's classic <laughs> Travis Brady. Everybody <laughs> trying to get me put into a into a corner. You just hold it. Okay. Just you know, okay. hold it like an egg. All right. <laughs> there you go. So what's the cigar? supposed to do like this cigar give you like a little it's buzz more of a vibe for for me to be honest um i just like i like the taste of it i like the vibe of it it's fun to do with your friends it doesn't get you all screwed up so you can wake up the next morning without a hangover yeah yeah it's a good social event is that a good one see like how awesome is this Dude, this <laughs> hanging is in the backyard this is pretty cool. Chilling with you. So, um, so tell everyone how did how did you get into real estate? So I got into real estate. I actually don't know the story. Totally by mistake. Oh, you don't know the story? Uh, I thought I've told you this, but so I um, I was working at a gym called Orange Theory. You and I also get along because we have a very similar upbringing. We both played baseball. You were we're both into fitness. You more than me. <laughs> but I was working at a gym, and um, I had a boss that was kind of teaching me how to make phone calls. And one day he came in and he was all irritated. He's like, you didn't make any calls today. And I, I was like 18 at this place called Orange Theory Fitness. You guys have probably heard of it. And I love um, their treadmills, man. It's like running on a cloud. Dude, I, I, learned, I learned all my beginning sales at this gym from this guy. And he would love to hear this because he, um, he and I kind of butt heads a little bit at the beginning. Mm -hmm. because I was kind of lazy when I first started, like, my sales journey. And he's like, hey, you, you got to make... 18? Yeah, 18. And uh, he goes, you need to make five calls today. So I made five calls. And then the next day he came in, and he goes, you need to make 10. And, you know, it just kept kept building up. And one day, you know, three, four, five months later, I had this book of... There was no CRM. <laughs> I had this book of names and their phone numbers next to it, and I had highlighters and reminders of and the highlighters were different colors for who to call and when to call and what they said and if I left a voicemail and I was really selling the hell out of these gym memberships mm -hmm. and one day like a year into selling memberships I was selling far more memberships than anybody at Orange Theory my cousin looked up and said hey dude you need to come do real estate and I was like 
I was 19 and I was like, okay, that sounds cool. Like, what do I, like, what do I do? <laughs> no idea. Right. Um, was in college at that time, my freshman year, this was going into my sophomore year of, high, of college. And, um, he said, come, come work in my call center. You're doing everything that you would do for orange theory, but in real estate, and you'll make 10 times more money. And I said, okay. So I went into this call center. There were, uh, juveniles, there were all sorts of people that you just <laughs> typically would not be hanging out with in this call center, all sorts of people. Right. And, and what was the call center for? Just real estate? Yeah. So it was a real estate team and they had offices all around the country and they had these, all these people that really couldn't find jobs anywhere else <laughs> that were in this room with me. Yeah. And we were all making calls for realtors setting up appointments, te uh, teeing up listing appointments for realtors all around the country. And I like found my love for working and selling and finding, helping people really is yeah. what, what it came down to. So I did that for three years, um, lived in Tempe with a couple of my buddies that were going to ASU. Mm -hmm. So got all the benefits of the fun down in Tempe without going to college. You didn't go to college at all? <laughs> no, didn't do the college thing. Um, See, I was stupid and I went to college. <laughs> well, I just happened to have the right. And what I learned I, is you don't go to college. Well, unless you're getting like a scholarship. <laughs> Actually, here's, here's what I would, here's what I legit me tell people. If what you love, like with all your heart requires a degree. Then go. Then go to college yep. and, or like you're getting a scholarship like, I hope my son Tatum grows up and plays in college with baseball. Yeah. Right? Because I think there's a lot of good opportunity to meet people. And my web designer says it perfectly. He's like, your first few years out of high school, you're going to fuck it up anyway. Yeah. So just you know, there's go, a, go there's, do something a little there's, productive. There's two sides to that, right? So one side is don't go to college because you're not going to use it and it's a waste of money. And then the other side of it is, well, if you're going to go to college, get as many contacts as you can out of that college experience and go and for if you're gonna do real estate, sell everybody that you meet in college a house, right? Yeah. So I've seen I've seen it both sides. I mean, I've, I, there's lots of realtors that definitely went to college, were in the fraternity or fratern um, sorority thing and crush it, right? So that that would be the reason to go. Um, I, didn't, I didn't go. I did the call center for three years and one day decided, okay, it's time. I'm gonna go get my license. So I was 20, 22 years old and living at home. Actually just moved out, um, but had like no money and yeah. was scared as all get out. Right. Um, basically had a thousand dollars in my bank at that time and went to join a guy who I, I worked for, for three years. And I remember my mom gave me a check for 2,500 bucks and that check lasted me, I think four months. <laughs> I don't know how, I don't know how the hell I did that, but it lasted me three or four months. And I sold my first house like mm -hmm. pretty quick. It was a it was a, a house in Santan Valley, BFE. All my first year, I was driving an hour for every appointment. Holy shit! <laughs> and um, paid where my did mom. you live at the time? So I was living I was living in Tempe, okay. um, driving to a Scottsdale office, and then and then driving literally all over the the valley. Anyone anyone who would consider talking to me, I was going to their house. <laughs> Dude, that's what you have to do at first, man. You have to fucking well, hustle. Yeah, and well, that's and that's honestly, we'll get into the whatever it takes. But that's that's really what stemmed the whatever it takes slogan and motto that I still go by today. No one wanted to go to Santan Valley or Casa Grande or Florence. I mean, some people that live in Arizona, some some of them don't even know what that is, you know. And they're so far, but it was literally a, hey, I'm gonna go do this or. Like, I'm not going to have any money. I'm not going to be able to live. And so, yeah, my mom supported me a little bit uh, at the beginning. And, and that was like, that $2,500 meant so much. Like, it, it, it still is like, I thank her all the time for that. Yeah. Because that $2,500, like, dude, that was like a lot of money at that time. Dude, for me, right after high school, uh, my parents uh, gave me their uh, access to the savings account. There you go. That they had started the build sent before I was even born. Yeah. And it was just enough to pay for the first semester of college. Yep. But I was so grateful for that money though. Yeah. I was really grateful for that. Yeah. Well, I, I, I hate taking, uh, stuff like that from anybody. That's one of the things that 
Like I, I don't love doing that. And so paying that back like ASAP was kind of like the number one, like it was the motivation at that time. Yeah. It wasn't like I need to go sell a house and get rich. It was, I need to pay my mom back like now. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there was, was a lot of, so it was so a loan. It was, yeah, yeah, okay. it was a loan. And there was a lot of motivation to, and now she didn't look at it like that. She was giving it and saying, here, have this, mm -hmm. but I wanted to, Yeah. that was part of the goal is to give that back as soon as possible. I think the biggest problem with a lot of people in business, if I'm being honest, is they don't have to make money. Yeah. Their spouse makes enough money or they right. have a job and they could always lean back on that job. When you're forced to actually like have to make money, yeah. it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. That's a whole nother thing. It's a whole different ball game. Yep. So you drive out to Santan. <laughs> How yeah. long did you do this for? Dude, I, I did this for like, honestly, for my first couple of years. Uh, so my business started, um, and it still is like primarily c cold calling, um, FTC approved. <laughs> so, throw that in there. So Why do you have to there. throw that in yeah, there? I throw that in there because I, 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 just because, uh, <laughs> just because. Okay. So, so do I have to throw that in there? You should. You should. Uh, yeah. F so F T F T C approved. We're, we're scrubbing the do not call list registry every single time we call someone. So, anyways, that being said, um, most of my business has been from reaching out and and cold prospecting um i did i did door knocking i did uh cold calling i've done i've done all the the sales stuff that you could probably think of but most of the success i've had is from call, calling people and building that business and doing it consistently day in and day out and then building that 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 foundation so that um you know now i'm just really following up with people it's not as much cold prospecting it's more warm prospecting with people that know me and have done business with me in the past. So right out of high school, um, I went and got a college at Discover Card. Okay. I was doing uh, like this payment protection thing for a little bit and I was yeah. like, dude, I don't like this. Yeah. And they're like, well, why don't we switch over to balance transfers? And so yeah. balance transfers, we call you and we're like, hey, Eric, uh, you know, I could save you some money today if you let me know what interest you're paying on other credit cards. Yeah. You can transfer all that other for 0%. So if you have five minutes, I can see if it's worth it for you or not. Yeah. That was my pitch. Okay, okay. Yeah, if it's not, totally fine. But um, I do have a 0% if you, if you want to transfer over things. So I'd walk them through it. Yeah. Dude, I fucking crushed it. Did and you? It was simple as that. Like, yeah. hey, I want to save you money. Right. If you give me five minutes of your time, I can see if it's worth it. And if it's not, then... Then, then five I'll minutes, you know five minutes wasted. Yeah, but no big deal. Being on the phone and calling, like you'd have to get like 50, 60 phone calls in a day. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that's, I feel like knocking doors, phone calls, I feel like those things are so imperative for people's success. Well, so today, before I came over here, like I told you I smoked a cigar on the roof, right? <laughs> and um, Were you making phone calls? I was making phone calls, right? So I made, I made 62 calls today, 62 contacts, not calls. So I called, I don't know, a few hundred people. 62 people answered my call and I talked to them. So I considered that a contact. Okay. And so one of the um, things I learned really, really early on in my real estate career was that, that real estate is a contact sport. I don't know who said that to me. Ooh, I like that. I don't know who said that to me. That's a bomb drop, by the way. Oh, we don't do <laughs> but, bomb uh, drops. Yeah, yeah. Wrong podcast. <laughs> Wrong podcast. So, I need uh, to do something like that. Yeah, though. yeah. You should get something like that. Smoke the cigar. There you go. That's a puff. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. We'll come up, with the, brand. We'll come up so, with the brand term later. Yeah, there you go. So real estate's a contact sport. And so today I made you know 62 contacts. And I look at that as, hey, I didn't do any deals today. Nothing really exciting happened today. I got a couple of what I would call nurtures, people that I talked to that were willing to talk to me again mm -hmm. and give me a chance to call them back that were interested in potentially selling at some point in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. But it's building the muscle, right? And doing it. And, and what most people, what most people don't do is they don't do that. They don't have a number that they look at every day and say, okay, I won today. And so not only realizing that contact that it's a contact sport, but literally being able to wake up and then say, okay, what do I need to do today to win? And we were talking about sports off, off the show earlier. Mm -hmm. That's like, if you don't know if you're one, how do you know if you're doing well? And that, that was a, a big thing to learn early on. That's really catapulted me. Cause I look at my day and I'm like, did I win or no? Mm -hmm. It's not, uh, there's no gray area in that. It's either I did or I didn't. Yeah. And so, just looking at every day as a, hey, did I win today? And if I did, great. And if I didn't, shame on me. So what was the game changer in your business? When did everything start to turn? 
Um, everything started to turn when I realized that really all realtors do very, very similar things. We all just do, some of them just do better than others, right? And some of them are more consistent than others in aspects. So, you know, there's, there's, um, there's not really a secret sauce, so to speak. The secret sauce is just doing the work. And that's, not a sexy way of looking at it, but it's the truth, right? And so the the guy that wins the big game is either the guy that's going to spend the most money or make the most contacts. Mm -hmm. And so I decided really early that I wasn't really, I wasn't able to spend the money that the bigger, bigger guys were spending. So I either had to figure out a way to outwork them or put in as many contacts or get close to what they were getting. I wasn't paying for billboards or advertising or marketing on TV or anything like that. So it was literally, okay, how, how they're getting thousands of contacts every day, just driving by their signs or whatever they're doing on marketing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to have very intimate conversations as with as many people as I can mm -hmm. and really understanding that that was the only thing that mattered and just understanding that that was <laughs> nothing else really mattered if I just did that. Mm -hmm. And I think most people just kind of sit back, they'll post something on Facebook or yeah. social media and they'll just wait back waiting for people to come to them. They'll put the open sign. I'm a realtor now yeah, and expecting yeah. all these. Well, that's what happens. You get into real estate and you think I passed and now my phone's going to ring and everyone's going to call me to buy a house. And that does not happen <laughs> as, as, as I wish it did. It doesn't. <laughs> and so I wanted to, I've always been a big, like, I've always been very proactive in anything that I do. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to go all in. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't want to rely on somebody else or something to be in control of my destiny or in control of the results that I'm getting. Mm -hmm. And so calling or making contacts and making conversation and meeting people belly to belly has always been my bread and butter. Mm -hmm. That's always been my one thing. Dude, it's, it's about conversations. How yeah. many intimate conversations yeah. can you have? Yeah. And it's not when people don't know how to market, they start selling. Yeah, that's what I've noticed. If you don't know how to market, you start selling. Marketing starts with, can you create a conversation? Yeah. Right? Like what's, when you jump on the phone with them, what's usually your pitch? There's not, a, a, like, it's, it, I mean, hey, Travis, it's Eric with Keller Williams, you know, and. and what's up, Eric? Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Uh, we just sold a house around the corner from you. Just wanted to reach out and see if you had any interest in possibly selling in the next year or two. Um, I think I'm going to Airbnb my house. Cool. Right. And so we won't have a cold, full blown conversation, but the bottom line is your script could be the worst script in the world. Mm -hmm. If you make more contacts than everybody else, it doesn't matter what your script is because you're going to call 50 people in a day mm -hmm. and 48 of them are going to tell you no. And it's not real. It doesn't matter about those 48. It matters about those two that say, oh, I am actually considering selling. And then knowing that like once they once you have that person that is interested, knowing what to say and how to say it at that point. And it's not really everything is a script, right? We all have internal scripts and dialogues that we have have memorized, so to speak. But it's all about question asking. Right. Open ended dialogue. So, oh, great. Where are you moving to? Oh, awesome. You got you're moving to Florida. What's got you moving to Florida? So having legitimately open-ended conversation questions, but having the purpose and being what my cousin would say, um, having some childlike curiosity. Childlike curiosity. Yeah. And so what, what why? I, why? Why? Right. We always my son, ask. My why. son's gonna get there soon. Yeah, yeah. The, He's no. in the look, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's the thing, right? And when he did, when he did for the first time, like, oh my gosh, he's in the white daddy stage. And then he did it 30 more times right. in the next like minute. Watch daddy, watch daddy. That was me. That was me. My whole childhood was why and, you know, and then we get old and we, and we just older and we decide not to be curious anymore. And we don't ask enough questions. Right. And we just take no for an answer and move on. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's where a lot of people just fall short without asking more questions, you're never going to get to the end of what your hope is, which is getting in front of them, meeting them, and ultimately eventually having a, a chance to be in the, in the driver's seat. So uh, having more questions, having more curiosity, and then truly giving a shit about the answers that you're getting and not just skimming over those questions and answers and going to what's in it for me. Yeah. That was a big, when you asked me earlier, what was like a big catapult? That was a big catapult because when I was when when I was first starting, it was all about selling the house and that's all that mattered. And it was turn and burn and get as many deals as I can. 
because I was young and wanted money, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, I was young and full and of And I gum. still want money, but <laughs> but it's it's more now of having a bigger purpose and a bigger why and saying, hey, I can get there faster if I truly care and I put these people first. Yeah, I think over time, like for me anyways, like you start focusing on the money and you go after the money and yeah. you chase the money and it runs away from you. Yeah, yeah. But then at some point in time, and I don't, this wasn't like an overnight thing, but it was gradual for me. Yeah. You began to learn like, hey, if you just start taking care of other people and genuinely helping them, yep. you're gonna get taken care of. My One of my first mentors said this, he said, the, the, the king of the empire takes care of his people. And when yep. he takes care of his people, they're going to naturally take care of him. Yep. And so. I love that. And so I continuously, like, we're folk, like, right now we're um, in the process of putting together a foundational event, Heart of a Champion. And so yep. that's where all my focus is at. All my focus. Not, like. Not 60%, not 75%. Yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, it's purely, like, how many people, how many kids can we get to this event to focus on it? Yep. And I think more in the future, I think I'll do that. And I did this event years ago and it brought me so much fulfillment and we're br bringing it back for our foundation. Yep. I'm excited you're coming, man. Yeah, no, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. We're really when, are, when are we going to get you on stage? <laughs> you, that's the second <laughs> thing. You got me here first. Now let's take one step at one a time. One step here. at a time. <laughs> Was this, were you nervous coming on the podcast? I wasn't nervous. I just wasn't sure what you were going to ask me. Yeah. What were you afraid I was going to ask you? <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not really nervous. <laughs> How much you make? <laughs> I thought it might come up. <laughs> well, I think a number is a number. I think at the end of the day, there's a lot of people that make a lot more money than, than I do. Yep. But I think there's a lot of people that make a lot more money than me, than I do that live a very miserable fucking life. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, that's for sure. So if you don't know Eric, what? You got house in Scottsdale. House up in Flagstaff, which I love that house. Yeah. Dude, I'm so jealous of that house. It's so badass. <laughs> hey, you could come in. Tell us how dude. you got that house. That's a good story. That is a good story. So it's the same story. I got my Scottsdale house too. Um, so I always, I've always found that the best deals are found between a buyer and a, and, and a seller. Um, and so, <laughs> as I'm a realtor, of course, a, a, a buyer comes to me. I find him a house. But when I'm buying a house for myself, I'm I'm not calling somebody else. I'm calling the seller directly. And so the Flagstaff house, we were playing golf. I was with a couple of my buddies mm -hmm. and we all hit, we all hit our drive into this house's yard, <laughs> the house that I own now. <laughs> and Did you hit anybody? No, we didn't hit anybody. <laughs> we didn't hit anybody. We were at his we were house close. a month ago and yeah. we're oh, yeah. towards the front end. And I see this golf ball ricocheted off my wife's leg. And yeah. I'm like, who tossed the, who threw the ball at her kind of scared the shit out of all and of us and someone actually <laughs> someone hit, hit yeah, a someone. fucking ball dude that was a one in a million shot i mean that that doesn't happen very often that's the first time but but um anyways we hit our balls a hey, side yard. side note so i heard that i want a a big uh you want a big ash that's big good. ash yeah, why, why do i want a big ash well the smoke gets a little more thick and and it's a better smoke when you do that okay so i heard that's like a respect thing so if you see someone with a big <laughs> ash you're like, you have to give them the nod. Give them a little nod. Hey, nice ash there. <laughs> Is that what you do? <laughs> Get a little picture with your ash. Try, try to see if you can put it on the table and see if it'll stand up. That's really the top. Oh, that's, that, that's the tail of a good ash. That's the tail of a good ash. <laughs> I don't think it'll stand. My Any ash is a little weak, it looks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, we hit our balls in the yard. We met, I met the, the lady who was living in the house, and I said hi. And, you know, we kind of went, went upon our ways. And... We get to the next hole and I said, man, that was a really cool house. And all my friends were like, yeah, yeah, that, that is. And we had all been talking, all my buddies had been talking about getting a place up there. Um, and the next day I picked up the phone and I had already been kind of calling around Flagstaff. My wife had really wanted to be up there. She's from Colorado, so Flag is like perfect. It's a two hour drive from Scottsdale. We can be there quick, no plane. And I can be back in Scottsdale if I need to be, you know, for a meeting. It's, it's awesome. So anyways, long story short, I called her the next day and I said, hey, um, any chance you have any thoughts of selling? I was in your, I, was, I met you yesterday. I hit my ball in your yard. How did you get her number? So I pulled, 
a tax record search and found out who owned it and <laughs> did, did she some, find did that was home, weird did some homework no no she i said hey i hope you don't i i actually called and said hey my name's eric i don't you know not to be weird or anything but i actually met you at your home yesterday i was golfing with some buddies she thought i was full of shit and she actually said yeah whatever i get calls like this all the time it was like and i was like no 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 i promise i said here let me text you a picture of me and my buddies out on the course so you know I'm not lying to you. Yeah. So mid call, texted her a picture. Oh my gosh. She got she got the picture and she goes, "Okay, I do remember you guys." Yeah. And I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. So any chance you would think about selling?" And she goes, "I would sell tomorrow, but you got to convince my husband." Mm. And I said, "Okay, no problem." And we kind of briefly talked about what she wanted for the house and yada yada and so she said, "My husband will call you." And so sure enough, he called me. We talked for a little bit. He asked me a bunch of questions. Why do I like the house? He kind of wanted to size me up a little bit, and he did. And, what, what were some of the questions he was oh, asking? Oh, why, 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 like, why do you like my house? You know? And I was like, well, you're right on the par three. I can barbecue. I can go out and hang out on the course and putt with my friends. My dogs have got the yard. Like, I, just, yeah. I, I told him all the truth about why I liked his house. Yeah. And we, uh, we connected, and, I said, and he had a Phoenix Suns uh, flag outside of his house. I said, and the Suns were in the finals at the time so yeah. i said are you gonna watch the suns game tonight he goes yeah and i was watching the suns game and they won and after the game i said i said go suns or something and, and so we we had um some mutual interests sure and broke the ice through that and um anyways long story short like 24 hours later we inked a deal and i bought his house and we closed 30 days later and shit he, I asked him, I said, in the middle of the inspection, I said, hey, who does your landscape? Because your landscape is incredible. Like, I love, and he goes, I do it. I'm the landscaper. And I said, do you want to still do the yard after I close? And he said, yeah. And so we've remained friends. He does my lights. He does my landscape. He's, I mean, we're good friends now. And he does really? a lot of the maintenance still for the house. So it's, wow. it's a really great mutual relationship. And the deal worked out awesome. Wow, that's crazy. I know. So you just picked up, what, three more houses recently? Yeah. Yeah. So in the last. So teach last... me to be a boss like you. <laughs> so teach. So here. Well, it's here. all it's all about um, it's all about hunting for opportunities, right? Yeah. And so that's that's the main thing is we talked about. I've I've had a little bit of a shift in mindset over the last year or two, as you know, I've sold a bunch of houses now, and you know. So before we talk about that, what was your shift in your mindset? Shift in mindset of going into a, an appointment to list a home my first instinct for my whole career so far up until about recently has been let's sell this house for as much as we can right and that as a realtor the realtor in me is supposed to do that and that is my ultimate goal but my my conversations with sellers has never been just about uh, it hasn't been about anything other than that and there's a lot of sellers out there that would like to just get a quick offer or move fast or sell it to uh, stay in their house or there's lots of different options, right? And my whole communication has been, let's list it. Let's get you a top dollar and you'll be happy. And for the majority of people, 95% of them want that. And it's worked out really well for me. There are, however, a, a large percentage, probably more than 5% that have other interests that they don't want to do showings and they don't want to do listings and they don't want people coming through their home and all the stuff that comes along with selling a, a house on the sure. traditional market. So just having the mindset shift that, hey, explore these other options. My job is not to tell them what they should do, but tell them what their options are. And so, Boom. yeah. That's so a good one. Another one, yeah. I think that, that, and that comes from listening. 100%. What's, what's important to you at the end of the day? Yep. That's one of the top questions when I'm meeting with people. Yep. So, yeah, what's, what's the most important to you? Yep. And I mean, who are you to say what's important to them? Right. No, that's, that's, that's it. And so for a long time, it was, my mindset was if I'm not helping them get top dollar, I'm not doing my job. And that's not really the case. And my mindset has shifted to, Hey, your job as a realtor is to give them all of the options that are on the table. And if you're not giving them all the options, you're not fulfilling your job. You're not doing the fiduciary. So now my conversations are, hey, here's, here's a top dollar price that we can get on the open market. Here's a cash offer. Here's an offer I can get you. Here's, you know, X, Y, Z. Like there's four or five different options, right? Like here's a, here's a wholesale price. Here's a, hey, here's a cash out price. Here's a, somebody that's going to um, buy it and let you stay in there for a year. 
here's a open market sale price. Like, so yeah. there's, there's all these different options that they can choose from. And I really wasn't having that conversation. And now that I'm looking at it differently, I'm having those conversations and opportunities are now being presented. Interesting. Yeah. So how we got into this house, I mean, we put in five offers before yep. we really got in this house. And right. the, one of the reasons why we got in this house and I was telling my wife, I was like, we're going to have to, we're going to have to come in and, and see what's important to the seller. Yep. And this particular person, they were wanting to live in it. They were wanting to sell it, but live in it for a little bit. And we weren't necessarily ready to move down right then and there. So that's how we essentially got it. Yep. And they chose us over other higher offers yep, because, because of, that. of that, because of that reason. Yep. So it all, all, I mean, back to our original conversation, we were talking about, you know, calling and what am I saying? It's childlike, childlike curiosity, asking open-ended questions, finding out what's important and then executing. So is it whatever it takes or childlike curiosity? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, whatever it takes to get on the phone to make the calls. Okay, right? then, then childlike so curiosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When did, uh, when did the whatever it takes like uh, slogan really hit you? I mean, you've been running with that for how long now? I'm a big Grant Cardone fan. And um, so whatever it takes, I definitely, you know, have a little trademark <laughs> sure. from, from Cardone on that. And so, but again, I, I um, back to how I got into it, I took a course actually, Cardone University when I was 18 in that call center and I bought a hat before I bought the course. And the guy that, the gal actually that called me, she called me cause I bought the hat and then she, her job was to sell me on the course. Sure. She called me like 12 times in like a month. <laughs> so like every other day she was calling, are you gonna sign up yet? Are you gonna, you know? And I'm like, okay, fine. So, and, and again, remember I was in the call center with $2,500 that my mom gave me after the first sale. And I had like seven grand. I gave her three grand for this course. Well, what made you want to sign up for it? I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I didn't know what I was saying. I mean, I had a little bit of mentorship in the call center, but I really needed somebody and something to teach me what to say, how to say it. What is, what, what is sales? What like teach me this. So I went and Dude, they don't teach you sales in high school. No, they don't teach you anything. And Here, here's what I would say. If you're not breaking six figures in your business, at least, which really isn't that much these days, I'd probably put it closer to 150. If you're not breaking 150, you don't understand sales. Y yeah, no, that's very fair. Like, and, and I would, and back before I broke six figures, I would have argued, I would have argued this with someone like, oh, I know sales. Like I really didn't. And I think, I think being humble and where you're at at any point in time yeah. is super important yeah. because shit, what holds us back from multiple millions of dollars a month? You know what I mean? Like there's something that we don't know. People that are doing those types of numbers know something or are doing something different than you are. And that's why they're getting those results. And so one of the things um, I continue to hear from mentors that I have is, if you're not willing to do things differently, don't expect to get different results than everybody else. And so I go back to that book, The One Thing, Gary Keller, it's basically the premise of the entire way I've done my business, structured my business, which is the one thing, which is my, my prospecting every day, the consistency of that, building that muscle. If I'm not doing that and, and looking at how do I make this better every day and do things differently than everybody else that's doing what I'm doing, don't expect to get different, super successful results if you're not willing to do the different things that everybody else is unwilling to do. I think baseball taught me that. Yeah. Taught you how to fail. The, the biggest problem that I think everyone has in their business, I think me and you both have the same problem. We, we don't get enough no's. Oh, I get plenty of no's. <laughs> I don't think I'm getting enough nose. I think I need more nose. I do. To be honest with you, I'm, I'm getting a lot of, I nose. think you need more nose too. Everybody needs more. Right. So I, I say that and I, I kind of, I kind of chuck growing crooked over here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That one, you might ash that one. You might, you might kick down because yeah. it's going to spill. Yeah. Um, there we go. I, I, I say, break. I say I need more nose and I kind of chuckle at that, but you're right. Right. Like everybody, everybody could get more. That should be your goal, right? Fail. That, that's another Keller Williams thing. Fail forward, right? And for anyone who's new in sales or new in real estate, if you're watching this, the goal should be to get as many no's every single day as you can. And it's kind of like baseball, as you said. You hit 300, you're a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. You strike out seven of 10 times, you're in the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. right? Um, 
it's the same thing in real estate going back to it's a contact sport, right? Well, as many spirits, dude, I say the same as thing. many knows as you can you get, get three hits out forward, of 10 fail forward. Yep. You get three hits out of 10. You're going to the hall of fame. So break this down for someone like me or other people that are listening to this podcast, um, that aren't in real estate full time. What advice would you give for them for getting some of these deals? For getting what kind of deals? So these last three deals that you got, what were they exactly? Well, so they're all, so now, so all of, all three of them are, are buy and hold deals, okay. cash flow deals, right? The goal for me now is, is to try to get as much income coming in without having to do anything. So passive income, mm -hmm. um, cash flow. And so all three deals will be deals that I hold on to long-term that generate, you know, 500 to a thousand dollars a month, um, after I pay the mortgage. And so what's your what's your question exactly though and so so for someone like me that yeah. isn't in real estate full time yeah what what would you recommend as far as like real estate goes like how to find them or or yeah how do I, how do I get it how do I take my real estate so like for me so we got property here we got um, let's see one two three four five five doors in Utah yep we're wanting to expand well let me tell you let me tell you what we're planning on doing and, you, and yeah, yeah let's hear your advice sure so we both love uncle g yeah dude dude you got a 10 exit man <laughs> you want that jet yep. dude you got to find someone that's gonna pay you that's gonna pay for that jet you ain't paying other for that jet man. other people's money <laughs> what's your favorite grant cardone saying don't be a little don't bitch. be a little bitch don't be a <laughs> <laughs> that is his best line I mean that that he put it on the back of his hat. I mean that's the best thing he's probably <laughs> that that got into my head too. I'm like, yeah, I am being a little bitch right now, dude. When it when it comes down to it, that holds you back from going to the level. There's something inside your head that you said that I'm not willing to do. When it comes down to it, I'm not willing to invest this much. I'm not willing to like we all have that. Yeah, there's the, the, we all have that thing inside of our head. Like yep. I'm not in. It's constantly breaking down that barrier and said, what am I not willing to do that I need to be willing to do to go yep. to the next level? Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's been my, like I said, from the, I've, I've said it maybe three or four times on this show is I've consistently done what most are unwilling to do, which is knock on doors on Saturday from 10 to 10 to one or 10 to two, whatever. Um, knock on doors in the summer, make 40 calls every single day, right? Like, most, most people are not doing that. And so that's been my one thing. I, I never, grew, my parents didn't grow up at the country club. I didn't have, you know, I had a lot of good re resources through my folks, but I never, I didn't grow up in that sure. circle. Right. Um, you, grow, you didn't get given right. the golden spoon. No, no. And I, and I don't have a, a lead generation machine that's producing multi-million dollar listings every day. Right. So like I have to go find them. Right. That's, it's my job that is my I, the best way to look at it is my job is going and hunting for a job and um what i mean by that is finding an opportunity to either sell a house buy a house help a buyer like I, until i have that client that is my job my full-time job is to go find that person to help yeah so what so going back to the conversation so what we're planning on doing um uh, grant cardone actually influence me he's like dude you need more doors man you got one door yeah they move yep. out dude you're paying for all of it so i think we're gonna try to um get into apartment complexes and then um i think after i find a good apartment complex i think we're gonna rent out this and get another place yeah no i love it i i um i like that idea my only my only thing and what i've been focused on is focusing on stuff that i know and I had a mentor kind of tell me this because I, I'm, I was very shiny object oriented when I first got into real estate and it was, oh, should I flip this thing? And, oh, should I go and buy this house and, you know, rent it out or Airbnb it? And there's so many different things, right? That you can Dude, do. There's in so real many different like there's avenues so, in real is. estate. It's ridiculous. It's crazy, right? So if you try to do them all, you're, you're a jack of all trades and a master of none. So you would say stick to one avenue. All I would say is for me personally, I'm focused on what I know and I'm, I'm very good at this point and looking and knowing what single family homes sell and rent for. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's constantly changing, right? It's like the market's moving and prices are moving and stuff like that. But I've looked at enough deals now to where I know, hey, this is, this is a good price. This is a good, a good house to buy. It cash flows. It, it's going to rent for this. And I know it. 
when I get outside of what I know, um, it makes me nervous. Yeah. It's like investing in something that you truly don't understand. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of like Bitcoin, right? I don't know anything about it. I haven't took, taken the time to learn about it. Mm -hmm. And there's definitely a good shot I missed out on a bunch of money from it. But, but I feel I, like the time's now, dude. But that's okay. I'm okay with that. Like yeah. I, I go to bed sleeping at night knowing good and well that, and some people will listen and say I'm just foolish for not trying to learn other stuff. Sure. But I, I'm okay with that because I'm, I'm really honed in on what I want to learn, which is real estate and single family homes. And I, that's what I've, I've, I haven't mastered it, so to speak, but I'm pretty darn close. Yeah. I feel very confident and knowing when I look at a deal, if it's a deal or not. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that's what I'm focused on. And I'm just focused on that because that's what I know. And that's what I'm going to continue to learn. And I could span out and get some other stuff, but for me, like that's, that's my bread and butter. So, yeah. you know, where do you want to be at in three to five years? Riding horses every day. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be nice. It'd be nice to hey, have Hey, Jimmy. That. Yeah, right. Or, well, or, in three to five, in three to five years, in three to five years, I'd like to have enough passive income to where the, the call, I, I don't not want to, a lot of people don't want to work and don't, they want to be able to do whatever they want. I think that's, it's the freedom part, right? That I want. So I love what I do. I love making phone calls. I don't look at making calls and saying, ah, this sucks. And you know, this is hard. I actually enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of weird like that. It's part of why I've been successful with it. I think in the, the next three to five years though, as my life uh, progresses. I have a kid, hopefully. Um, I want to have more freedom to say, ah, I want to fuck off today. I don't want to make calls today, you yeah. know? So that would be a goal for me. That's, that is probably my number one goal is to be able to have enough passive income from the real estate that I own to where I can say, eh, I'm not going to work today. I'm going to, I'm going to just go do this. And I, I feel like there's a part of me that can do that now, but not at the scale that I want it to be at. How do you know it's at the scale you want it to be at? <laughs> Having that number, I, I think there's What's a. The I think there's a certain number that, like, you, you look up and you say, okay, if I have this much money coming in every single month, without having to do anything other than manage real estate, which I'm fine with because I have I have resources to do that. Uh, fifty thousand probably a 50, month. Fifty thousand. Yeah, I think fifty thousand coming in feels good now. And I'll look at this in five years and I'll say, what, what a. What a small-minded guy I was. <laughs> I will. I probably will. And, and, At the and rate we'll get, of inflation, too. Right. No. And maybe it's maybe it's a hundred thousand. Right. Yep. Maybe it's maybe it's a million. I I don't. Today it feels like if I if I had fifty thousand dollars a month coming in passively without having to lift any fingers, that feels good. Where do you think real estate's going in the next year? How how because yeah. Where do you think real estate's going? Well, in the next I think year? that rates are gonna drive what a, what what happens in real estate in the next year, and it's kind of. I think there's a lot of head, there's a lot of headlines that are saying, oh, it's going to crash and blah blah blah. There's a there's a big media drive to. It's so f weird how the media works. Media puts out that the market's crashing. All of a sudden, it legitimately stops, and we feel it in my industry, right? Like I right feel now, like I feel like it's more of the media. Oh yeah, doing it than actually what's really. Oh, a hundred percent. And so. People, but I mean, we knew we've known that since the dawn of time. Like yeah. the market is fueled by fear. It is fueled by fear. So rates have affected it, but rates haven't affected it as much as the media has affected it. I think the media has, has given a, way more of a focus on what is actually happening today than, than what is really actually happening. So as, as the media continues to put out headlines that the market's crashing and the world is ending, which it, you know, the world's a little weird right now, right? So that has something to do with Dude, it. They've but been predicting the end of the world since the dawn of the fucking time. For the last Everyone years. in their generation has predicted yeah. it's going to be the end of the world. Yeah, yeah. I think that the market will cool down as it is right now. And the, w my su assumption is that by the time we get to next summer, we're either going to see rates at 8% or we're going to see rates back in the mid sixes. And who knows really honestly what is going to happen with that it's kind of a a, toin, a coin toss but the rates will come back down at some point it's just a matter of when and when they do it'll be a frenzy again um right now they're the market's slow and there's not as many there's no bidding wars right now really on anything to be honest um do i see that coming back yeah but i think the rates have to come back down for that to really happen again 
So one of my uh, financial coaches told me timing the markets like finding the drunk farmer in the film yeah, in the field the next day. Yeah, it's like you'll go look where he passed out, but you don't know where he's gonna ultimately be. The best the best way to look at real estate is uh, the best line I've heard is, "Don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait." And so that's kind of been that's kind of been my philosophy. I bought my first house when I was just turned 21 yep. in 2000, March of 2008. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. March That's of 2008. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. So you, and, you and my just... mindset at the time was like, oh yeah, I'm getting a really good deal yeah, on yeah. this. You know, I'm buying it towards the bottom of the market. Oh, it was just the tipping point. Do you still own that house today? No. Uh, have I told you this story? I think it blew. Didn't you have a fire? <laughs> you told me about it. It was something. close to a fire. <laughs> Dude, I, I had a lifetime worth of shitty shit happened in one house oh, oh god so okay is that the house that it happened to yeah so okay. i bought this house dude i still have nightmares about this house that's how bad this is shit. this is why people sell real estate <laughs> right here so, so i got in so i got into it um actually when i was ready to close two days before i was ready to close my realtor comes back and says you're uh or my loan officer says you're not approved anymore and i was like well what do you mean i'm not approved anymore that's what the pre-approval process was all about yeah and so he said, you had, you needed three trade lines of 24 months since, I mean, since I was young, I hadn't really built up my credit. Okay. My third trade line was 22 months and not 24 months. You had to have two years. Yeah. I had three trade lines, two or more years. I had a perfect credit score though. Okay. Flawless. I think it was like 750 or something like that. Like it was, okay. what's the highest credit score you can get? I, I eight. Eight, yeah. I mean, I remember it was like seven, around 740, 750. And so I had to convince them to stay on contract while I go out and found another one. Meanwhile, rates went up from 5.5 to 6.5. Anyways, get in the house, economy, yep. house drops from 196. My house was probably 130. Okay. 130. Rent out the rooms to pay my mortgage. I mean, I really didn't take a big hit from it because my roommates were paying the mortgage. Fuck, dude, where do I begin? I had grandpa. He had, whatever reason, dude, he'd walk into the kitchen at night. He would put his hands in the fucking peanut butter. Your grandpa did? No, some grandpa, like a grandpa oh. that rented out the house. He now was, we're talking about whatever it takes. You got a grandpa living with you. Oh, grandpa, I had my sixth grade teacher living with me. Oh. Not even kidding, dude. Boy, oh Mr. boy. Mr. Holden shows up in my house. That's crazy, Mr. really? Mr. Holden, what the hell? He went through a divorce, dude. Super nice guy. I oh loved him as God. a roommate, dude. He was so clean, and he helped me on the yard work on Sunday. He was awesome. Oh, boy. So ran out the few people I know, few yeah. of my friends, and then, you know, I had it was a five-bedroom, three-bath. I'm going to live in the master, which really wasn't a master. It was this yeah. dinky little room with a small-ass <laughs> With a bathroom. little shower. Yeah, 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 yeah. Barely enough room to take a shit and shower. <laughs> so grandpa smearing peanut butter across the fucking walls at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my gosh. Uh, some... Indian girl refused to pay the $400 for rent and she left all her shit there. That wasn't worth anything to me, but probably worth thousands of dollars to her. Oh boy. Dude, it's just one thing after another. The biggest one, I come home one night, this was the freaking nail in the coffin. I come yeah. home, I pull in the driveway and all of a sudden I see three SWAT guys come around the corner. Oh, geez. Four SWAT guys come from out the front door. One come out of my freaking window. Who are you? Put him up, put him up, put him up. Uh, okay, I stole the piece of gum when I was in junior high. I'm sorry, like, I have no idea why SWAT's raiding my fucking house, dude. And and I was, and they're like, oh, we're looking for so-and-so. I can't remember his name. It was a roommate downstairs, and apparently he had forced a younger girl that was underage to have sex with him. Oh, Jesus. At your house? I don't know where it happened. He was 21. I think she was 17 or something like that. So I was like, he actually works at Taco Time down the street. And they were actually pretty funny. They're like, he probably gave us our burritos before we came over here. Oh, my God. So they picked him up that night. Next morning, I'm looking on, and you see his mugshot on the Internet. Wow. Had to clean out his shit. Dude, it was just one thing after another. The, so I, I leveraged that property. You can do future-based income. Yep. Buy the next property. Rent it out. But time went on. It's just one problem after another. It's in this really bad area. Yep. I'm getting $700 a month on top of paying the mortgage, which was pretty good. No, That's great. Yeah. And everyone's saying that like, oh, don't sell the house. That's really good. So we get this one person in there and they're getting money from the government. 
-huh. And you know some of the people that get money from the government, yep, yep, right? Yep, got it. And uh, my uh, property management group reaches out to me. They're like, hey, we haven't heard from so-and-so for, for a while. I was like, okay, well, isn't that your fucking job is yeah. to go <laughs> see what's going on? Yeah, what's going on? Apparently, they got arrested, so the government won't pay for their rent, so all their shit. They go into the house, coppers ripped out of the walls, walls are destroyed, oh, like geez. fucking shit show. So anyways, we're like... All right, let's get her evicted. Let's get it out. During that whole process, people kept breaking into the house. <laughs> Stealing all the shit that you just keep putting into the house. They well, walked that, in one that day. That was maybe a sign. Dude, I was one. so <laughs> mentally and emotionally done with this property. My wife was taking over. I was like, I can't even have these conversations. Like, you take it over. Yeah, that's a tough one. And so <laughs> they go into the property and they're looking and there's mattresses in the corner of all these rooms with numbers above the door. Oh god. Dude, it was being used as a fucking whorehouse. <laughs> I can't even make this stuff Dude, up. Dude, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> that's insane. They're redoing the house so we can sell it, you know, and yeah. that's a whole thing. They freaking lied about how much money they were doing and yeah. one of the employees that quit there called us and said, "Hey, just so you know, you might want to check into their uh you know uh, what they're doing at their house they're lying about how much they're really spending all the shit so that was another shit show jeez while some of the workers are downstairs working two random girls walk down into the basement peeled open the carpet and grabbed some like drugs or some shit oh my god and i'm like i'm so fucking done with this so house. you sold that one you got out I of that, sold one. that yeah house. yeah yeah that, there, there making, were enough red flags i ended up one. making a hundred thousand dollars on that well that's so good. long i know this is a long story but like Going back to the point that we were talking about, like I held on to the house. Yep. What what was the quote you said? It's uh, don't wait to buy real estate. Hold, uh, buy real estate and wait. Yeah. So I held on. It went from negative seventy to over a hundred thousand. Yep. Yeah. So hindsight being twenty twenty, it was a good investment. It leveraged yep. me to the next property. Yep. And I think I learned a lot through the process. Yeah, you, you definitely learned a lot. So, <laughs> dude, there's so many other stories off to tell you about the house. I didn't, I didn't cover half the stories. I'm, I'm glad. I was, thinking, I, didn't, I was waiting for you to break out one. I was like, oh, Travis. <laughs> dude, I haven't covered half the story. I got some other funny stories for you. I got some partying stories That's for funny. you. <laughs> Anyways, how do people uh, get a hold of you to? So I'm, to uh, talk to you? I'm at Mr. Whatever It Takes um, on Instagram. Um, probably the best way to find me though is through my cell or email. Um, cell phone is 602. Uh, maybe I shouldn't get, should I get my cell phone? Well, let's redo here, that. Here's let's redo what, that take here. Here's what, here's what someone said yeah. before we decide to redo it. Someone yeah. said, why are people so scared to give out their number? Yeah, we were just, I was just saw that How, on, on Bradley's podcast. <laughs> was he talking about he this? Talking I about heard it. someone else talking yeah, about Bradley this. Yeah, Bradley was like, answer the phone, uh, or don't answer the phone. And then he's got, he's got like, uh. Press one if you want to buy something right now. Press two if you want to call me to waste my time. <laughs> Press three if you want to call to chit chat. Press four if you're ready to. Uh, <laughs> you just had all these different like numbers for why that's, you would be calling. That's funny. Yeah, but no. Anyways, my my cell phone is uh, 602-741-6394. That's probably the best way to get me. Okay. Well, thanks for being on the podcast, man. Thanks for having me, brother. It was yeah. a pleasure. Wasn't too. Did I ask any? Uh, any, no, 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 not nothing, nothing that, uh, crazy, but I, I want to go back and think about the three to five year plan because I think that one, you got me off guard, but I want to I want to dive back into that answer. Ed Milet was saying no one really knows what they're going to do in like past five years. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, you know, because it's hard, it's too hard to really predict everything that's going to be happening. So I think yeah. that, I think that, yeah, three to five year plan is usually the sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for having me. Okay. Appreciate Good talk, it. guys. Yep. If you feel like this podcast can benefit someone, which I know it can, share it. Thanks for joining us. Be inspired in what you do, guys. Be next gen. As always, the world needs you. Good talk.